In this video I wanted to have a look at clipping mask and how they can be used. Essentially, uh, rather than defining it as clipping mask, I wanted to put it in a in a simpler way. Essentially what I'm wanting to do, what I'm wanting to accomplish is to, just for example purposes, let me go to a uh, harder brush here. What if I wanted to fill just this figure with color? I could go in with a brush, I suppose, and, and fill it in manually, but that seems extremely meticulous and time-consuming. It would likely be very imperfect. Uh, so here I've, I've drawn all over the face uh, on my one layer here, and that would be one way to do it, but obviously that would take a really long time and the result would not be great. So there's a couple of different ways to get the result we want. Now I, I've spoken in previous videos about destructive and non-destructive editing. So if I was to just draw directly on the figure itself on this same layer, that would be destructive editing. So I'm going to show you a method of, of doing that first. Again, it creates irreparable damage to that actual layer itself rather than being something you can change in reverse uh, later on if you change your mind. Uh, the first way to do it is if you look in the layers palette directly above, there's several different forms of lock that you can use. Some of them just lock it overall, such as the padlock. Uh, some of them just lock the motion. And then this one on the very end here, if I hover directly over it, see if I can get its name to pop up, it says lock transparent pixels. So on any given layer, if that layer does not fill the entire canvas, then it has some transparent pixels. So essentially what that's going to do is m make it where I can only color. I can only color on what already has pixels on it. So all the transparent areas will not be affected, which is anything where you can see this checkerboard pattern. So I'm going to select that and you'll see the small little lock symbol appear next to it. And then if I take this brush and just start coloring, it is only going to color on the existing pixels. So this is one way to do it, to lock the transparent pixels to make sure that you are only coloring in there. And obviously this is a really good way to get a silhouette. I'm going to show you another reason why we would use it uh, here in a minute. Uh, but again, if you look at my layers palette now, I still only have this one layer. I've now effectively gotten rid of the photo element entirely. Uh, and I don't know that's what that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit Command Z while I'm able. And let's look at a different method for it. Now obviously if I am wanting to maintain it, and do something non-destructive, I need to have an additional layer. The problem is if I create an additional layer and then start to draw over the top of it, I have preserved the original image, but I'm stuck with the same issue of trying to color in exactly what I need to. And if I lock the transparent pixels, it's not going to work because this layer is entirely transparent. So what we do instead is called a clipping mask. Uh, they're extremely easy to do, uh, but if you don't know what they are or how to use them, it can be difficult to figure out. Uh, the first thing that I would do is I would control click or right click on PC on the layer that I'm wanting to actually paint on here, which is above my photo. And I would go up to the option that says create clipping mask. What that does is it clips to whatever layer is directly below it, and you can see that now it has this it has indented and it has this small arrow coming out and pointing down to the image so it is clipped to this it cannot work on anything else so I can do what I did with the transparent pixel lock and fill this in with color such as that but now I can toggle it on and off in case I change my mind or want to do something different. Let's look at a couple of different options for it. Uh, for one thing, notice that if I right click or control click on it again and hit release clipping mask, suddenly I have a blob and then I can always put it back if I want to. So there's options here. You get a larger file size, but there's options and again the file size change is really kind of negligible. Let's look at it aside from something done with the brush. If I go down to the bottom of the layers palette and create a solid color above it, just make it brown or something and then control click create clipping mask now not only is it clipped to it but I have the option to go through and just change the color however I want by clicking on the thumbnail of that uh, color fill so I can change the color to 
whatever I want, change my mind later in the design, so on and so forth. That's one way to do it. Uh, this also works for uh, adjustment layers, such as if I wanted to do the hue and saturation, and clip that to this, let's say if this was on a photo background, then it would affect only the image itself. So a clipping mask is just a way of targeting another layer to interact the way that you want it to and it always interacts with what's directly below it. You cannot clip it to multiple layers. You can clip it to a folder which is something we may look at a little bit later. Again creating a bin down here in the bottom just using the button and then putting all your images in that folder and then clipping the hue and saturation layer or whatever you're using to the folder itself. So this is a, a, a pretty necessary thing to be able to do in complex photo composites uh, because you are going to have to change your mind. You're going to have to go back and make some changes. Let's look at a practical application of this. I'm going to grab a really dark blue. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to set that layer to multiply in its blending mode. And it's going to be fairly dark. I'll mess with the opacity in a minute. But then I'm going to clip that layer to the image itself. Then what I'll do is go in and we're going to pretend, let's look at our light source here. The light is kind of coming down from this direction. Uh, so I'm going to add some additional shadow. Again, this is going to look pretty terrible, but you'll notice I'm able to do this and not really worry about going off the edge because it's going to fill it in based on that clipping mask that I applied. I fill in some shadow right here on the hand. And again, this looks pretty terrible. You always have to, whenever you do shadows or something like this, you always have to go in and make adjustments thereafter. But the great thing about this is, let's say that I overshadow, that I overdo this effect. Because it's non-destructive, I can go in with an eraser and always just back up and remove some of the shadow. Now if I take that and I bring the opacity all the way down I can inch it up just a little and my shadow starts to have an actual effect rather than looking goofy. Soften up those edges a little bit. Obviously this is a really really fast demonstration but this is one of the things that clipping mask is great for when it comes to photo composites and you'll find yourself using them constantly no matter what kind of design you're doing.